Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Unstoppable Deep Dive. I am back with our influencer of the month, Leah Thompson, aka Girl Gone Crypto. And today we are here to talk all about blockchain domain NFTs. What are they? We're going to do a deep dive and tell you everything you want to know. So welcome, Leah. Thank you again for joining me for another episode of Deep Dive. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Dan. I appreciate it. <laughs> for sure. So I guess like a good place to start in talking about blockchain domains is uh, to talk about traditional domains, like the domains that we know in Web 2.0, the dot coms, dot orgs that we're using today. Uh, I think one thing that people don't realize is how current domains actually work. So why don't we just start there with um, how current domains work in Web 2.0, and then we can get to talking about like how that's gonna change or how that's gonna shift in Web 3.0 with blockchain domains. Yeah, so this is maybe even like a little more like your area of expertise. So I'll give you like my thoughts on how I would explain it. You can let me know if you think that sounds right. And so the sounds way that I kind of <laughs> the way I kind of think about our our current domain system on the internet is that it's all being funneled through very centralized servers, right? So there's the conversation of censorship has been really big in the world of social media, but a lot of people don't really think about um censorship potential issues with their website, right? But if you look at other parts of the world, such as maybe China or different areas where websites are getting shut down, the fact that it's a possibility is I think what in general our entire industry is looking to solve um, a lot of these issues where there is kind of trust and centralization involved, right? And so um, right now, the way that I kind of understand how our current domains work is that, you know, there's these certain really huge servers, right? That um, I don't know whether it's like, um, you know, Google or whoever is like hosting these massive things and you can buy a domain name, you know, let's say um, my domain is like Leah loves crypto.com. Um, and so I bought that domain name, right? I built a website on top of it, but truly like I am dependent on the, um, you know, the servers that I'm using to be up and running and versus um, kind of what, what you guys are building on unstoppable domains and more of like this web three scenario where it is more decentralized and it's, pinging and pulling data from like all of this computational power around the world. And so no one could really even bring it down if they wanted to, which is a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, for sure. You're a hundred percent right with that. And uh, right now it's like you, you have uh, Leah loves crypto.com and you probably rent it from like GoDaddy or whatever hosting provider you rent it from. And it's, but it's just that it's a rental. Like you pay an annual fee, um, or you pay a monthly fee or however you choose to pay it in order to keep using it. And say you have it on auto re renewal for like re repaying the payment every year. And then you like got a new credit card and forgot to update your information and your auto renew didn't go through then they would shut down your site and like somebody else could go on there and snatch up lealovescrypto.com and then you wouldn't have it anymore and it's like all of a sudden this brand that you've built your business around is gone and you either have to like contact that person like they might want you to pay them a lot of money because they might you know if they like did it on purpose and they're like a domain squatter or something um that's how it works. And then with blockchain domains, at least with uh, the dot crypto blockchain domains that we have, you pay a one-time fee and you own it forever. So if you buy Leah loves crypto, um, dot crypto or, you know, Leah dot crypto or whatever, you just pay for it up front and then you own it for life. So you never have to worry about paying that annual fee and making sure your auto renew is turned on, um, all of this stuff. Um, and then you're the only person that owns this and you're the only person that can make any modifications to it, that can transfer it, that can delete it, that can do anything with it. So I think that like concept of ownership that you talked about is like really important, um, especially as we shift towards Web3. I think like one of the biggest complaints people have in Web2, especially creators, is that we don't actually own any of the content that we create. Uh, the platforms that we publish the content on owns what we create. If you're an Instagram influencer, Instagram owns your content, you don't own it. If you're a musician and you put your music on Spotify, you only make a tiny portion of the money that you deserve to make because all of it goes to Spotify. So imagine a world where all of the content you create, you would actually be able to profit from it 
in a way that you deserve because it's all your content instead of have all the money and all the profits go towards a centralized entity. And I think that's uh, that's a really key concept. And that's that's, you know, what you just touched on as well. No, I think that's huge. And, and the fact that, um, you know, we see this come up time and time again. I'm glad you mentioned the whole music thing. Like, you know, recently there was the whole big battle with, uh, like Taylor Swift, who trying to get rights to her own music, right? And so the fact that, um, uh, I think that a lot of creators are waking up to, you know, the fact that they can potentially own their own content and all of these things, you know, is, I think the explosion of NFTs has really empowered a lot of musicians and artists and different people as well. And so, um, it is really cool to see this conversation coming up a little bit more mainstream where people are starting to get it. It's not as like fringe of an idea anymore, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, a hundred percent. And um, so I guess like something else I want to talk about too, that brings up a good point is like use cases for blockchain domains. So right now we definitely are still in the very early stages of blockchain domains. Like this is maybe like the early nineties or the mid nineties of dot coms. If we're making the analogy from web two to web three. And so very early days of uh, blockchain domains, but we do have a couple of really important and cool use cases already. The first one is that it makes sending and receiving crypto payments a lot easier. So instead of having to send a crypto payment to this really long string of letters and numbers that nobody can ever remember, you can just send it to the person's name dot crypto. Like I can just send it to Leah Thompson dot crypto instead of a long string of like 40 characters or whatever it is. You know, so that that's the first use case. And then the second one is the ability to build decentralized websites with your blockchain domains. So um, if you're a technical person, basically any kind of website you can dream up, you can build on the decentralized web already. And then if you're not a technical person, we do have some templates that are like really easy to use to build like a portfolio site or ba a basic landing page or something like that. So uh, th that's like sort of how I think about it. But from your perspective and like, uh, your experience interacting with blockchain domains. Are there other use cases that you can think of or that like you're really excited to see in the future? Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question. So actually, I have a Grogon dot crypto, um, which is really exciting. Um, so thank you that's to the so Estoppel team for helping me grab that one early on. Um, but yeah, so I think another kind of arena of this, you know, we talk a lot about um, you know, like NFTs and collectibles and, and people. You know, a lot of people that are here in the crypto space, they're they're here for some somewhat speculative reasons that's in various capacities, right? And so I think. I think that if we look at the traditional world of um, domain name uh, purchasing and selling, it's a huge industry. And so I think that even just looking at uh, people that are kind of viewing this as more of a like, hey, as Web3 continues to develop, these dot crypto domains um, might be, you know, in really high demand in the future. And that might be something that would be interesting to kind of think about now. I know that I've we've already started to see that. I know that there's some like secondary markets where that kind of thing is already happening, which is pretty interesting. But I think if we're looking at kind of like you were saying, like, you know, early 2000s, you know, it's kind of the early stage, like that's another arena that I see because that ended up blowing up to be such a huge industry in the more traditional Web2 world. A hundred percent. And then another use case uh, that we're actually seeing quite a bit with blockchain domains today is that blockchain domains are NFTs. And I know like NFT is the buzzword out there. And most people, when they talk about NFTs, they think about NFT art um, because that has been like the biggest use case out there. But you can actually NFT just about anything. Uh, you can mint just about any unique asset on the blockchain. And blockchain domains are one of those things because blockchain domains are unique. You have girlgone.crypto, for instance. Now, nobody else in the world can ever have girlgone.crypto unless you want to transfer it to them and give it to them. So that's uh, another another really interesting use case is that we're seeing more and more people buying these dot crypto blockchain domains because they see the long term value in these and um, selling it in, on the secondary market, like on OpenSea, for instance, uh, and you know, whether it's to generate a profit that way, like you see with NFT art collectors, some of those collectors collect NFT artwork because they genu genuinely like the artwork and they want to be able to look at it. Other people collect NFT art that they think is going to get big and explode and they'll be able to return a profit on those. So same sort of thing with, blo with blockchain domain NFTs. And um, that that's something that's very exciting as well. 
Absolutely. No, it's a really exciting time. Um, and again, just to like reiterate, like I love that the NFT conversation is coming more mainstream because there are so many use cases outside of art. And I think that that's kind of the next phase of where that's going is people realizing that this like idea of true decentralized digital ownership is, is really kind of, I think, where we're heading. And Unstoppable Domains is really kind of at the forefront of that from the, um, you know, really helping to build out Web3 and helping people to have a presence on, you know, on the on Web3 that they own and that they get to build out however they want, which is really cool. For sure, for sure. All right. Well, thank you everybody for tuning into another episode of Deep Dive. If you have more questions about blockchain domains or blockchain domains as NFTs or use cases or anything, please tweet us at Unstoppable Web or drop a comment below and we'll get those answered for you. And thanks again, Leah, for joining me for another episode of Deep Dive. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs>